hello and welcome so in today's video we are going to install Kali Linux purple uh, on my virtual box I've been taking this pen test plus uh, try hack me room uh, to prepare for my finals uh, I've been using Proxmox uh, Kali installation it's been doing great, but since uh, you, I am been uh, accessing it through VNC, copy paste is a big issue, and uh, dry hack me as a uh, uh, like you need to go uh, go to that machine that you're attacking, retrieve a file, JPEG, read it, or uh, check some etc. All that like you have to copy something from that machine into dry hack me uh, to get the credit. For that it was becoming a problem try hack me actual machines they are not good uh the uh, uh the other uh, day i was in a nessus room uh twice i had to run that room uh each time it took three plus hours to no avail um for that machine to install uh, nessus uh and uh, compile the plugins it's a painful process you have each time if the machine has been terminated you go download it again run it <clears throat> make sure the service is running uh in system ctl then you go and uh, get another key from uh, nessus that keys uh, they will give you only one key per hour uh, you activate it only to find that it will take three hours or more uh, for that machine because it's only two virtual CPU uh, for it to compile the whole Nessus plugin before you can actually go and start the uh, web application or the network discovery uh, scans so I decided hey just download my own uh, um, and uh, just use my own to connect so I've been connecting through Proxmox and the issue was again copy paste I could do a remote desktop into it I decide, uh, uh, decided not to because it takes the whole screen and it's it's a pain going back and forth on the same screen. Uh, the other thing was I could get another monitor. I have been thinking about it. This desk is not big enough for both of them so I'll have to substitute another desk on the side. Uh, it's a work in progress. So let's get started. Here we're going to name it Kelly. Uh, <clears throat> this is not right let's change it all right so this is what i'm going to do with it i'm gonna give it in let's give it an installer or no all right what the hell let's go uh, this part i hate the most the unintended installation i i don't like this but what the hell let's get get with it so it's gonna be uh Kali purple unintended installation i hate it there is no way for me to go and get rid of it i'm going to give it 8 gp of ram and four virtual cpus plus i'm going to give it 50 gp hard disk let's click finish and start it up i'm going to pause the video uh if, let's see how how it uh, boots up <coughs> there it is graphic install let's do that all right so yep it is English and the interface is purple as well American English detecting scanning installation bond installation media a dead Detect network, config the network soon. I forgot to change some settings in the network portion. I do see Intel Pro over there, but I think uh, it's not bridged, so it's gonna create its own little. <coughs> I'm gonna leave it a Kali uh, Aslan dot local full name for the new user. Let's keep everything lowercase account choose good password i 
Eastern. <coughs> Guided use, yes, entire disk. Uh, SCSI 3, um, okay. All files in one partition, let's do it. Continue. Yes. SSD is at 0% F-Disk, the SSD where it's being installed is at 4% uh, CPU is at 25 most of the time it hovers there I like this process, this Ryzen or Ryzen uh, 2 uh, 2700X I have had it for like 4 years now, still going strain, uh, strong I really like uh, its power like it's <coughs> so we can do KD plasma gnome all of them right so uh, like uh, Intel after just a couple of years uh, they start feeling slow and after four years definitely you start feeling the need or urge to go and get a, a more powerful one I was thinking that I'm gonna have the same experience with this one but it's Ryzen 7 2700X I love it um, anything I can throw at it uh, it just uh, does the job I have had it since summer of 2019 it's 2023 now um, <clears throat> I have had it um, I have had it install multiple virtual machines uh, like I maxed out the memory on them I, at one point you know if you can go back and uh, watch my old videos I had uh, seven virtual machine running on this thing it uh, through uh, what's that uh, hypervisor Microsoft hypervisor so I just switched to uh, this uh, virtual box only because uh, to get to 1080p in hypervisor you have to go and uh, change the config file make some settings you have to go search online do the settings trial and error get that to at least 1080p at this size this is ultra wide monitor uh, those they were sticking to a lower uh, size like half the monitor I didn't like it and I didn't like the because I had to go and do it for each new installation doesn't matter Windows uh, Ubuntu and any other thing with this there is a built-in uh, it just adopts so I like this one uh, the other reason was that uh, <coughs> uh, the course I was taking for Linux uh, it had uh, VirtualBox uh, and the cool feature was that you could reset the machine uh, like you, uh, you can image it base image it and each time you reset it it will go to that base image I really love that the third reason was that uh, uh, I had a course way back uh, again summer 2019 probably uh, when I had some other machines uh, for uh, ETL uh, that were installed through VirtualBox so I had there was no way for me to get to those machines while hypervisor was running so i had to uh, disable it and i was like hey i'm not gonna go back and forth let's just switch to VirtualBox for now and if i in future if i ever build uh, a new uh, computer i will go with uh, um, hypervisor if uh, a lot uh, i want to i don't i'm not a big fan of installing more softwares if uh, built-in software is doing its job properly and that is just to spin up a virtual machine and for whatever purpose for example if it's a CM it's a IDS it's a just a Ubuntu machine running some server for you if it's doing its job just leave it 
So some may argue that uh, same things can be done accomplished uh, in hypervisor. Uh, true, uh, but uh, when speed is the issue, when you are on a on the clock, uh, when your class is due and you have to go uh, read, uh, watch those videos, uh, do your home labs, uh, and pass that exam or test, you don't want to um, uh, go the harder route. You just want to make sure that the focus is on the learning and not on tweaking. Uh, tweaking on the side is good. I do that a lot. I actually enjoy it because you, when you go sideways, uh, you learn different things. But the thing is, <coughs> your professor or teacher or college class expect that test in by midnight on, on a certain day. So uh, it's just uh, not feasible while you're on the clock. Plus what I do is that I have multiple installations of different virtualization um, solutions. For example, in this machine I have VirtualBox. Um, in another machine uh, that I built for my son, I have Hypervisor. A uh, third machine that has Proxmox, it's a bare bone uh, um, virtual environment uh, running on uh, Risen 9 5900. I really love that uh, small machine. It's small form factor. Uh, it's on my channel somewhere. Uh, again, the only limitation is the memory. You can go up to 64, but the processor is super powerful. Most of the time, it's hovering, to, uh, running all the machines still run, uh, hovering under 10%. So sometimes I feel like that uh, I could get away with a uh, Risen 5. But uh, when I think of it, like uh, Risen 7 on a virtual machine, uh, bare bone mini PC is a good choice. Risen 9, maybe it's too much. Um, so, uh, most of uh, next day. Uh, I'm looking to purchase. I will be going with Risen 5. I am eyeing uh, some uh, virtual machine, uh, not virtual machines, the mini PCs, and all of them. I just want the sweet spot is Risen 5, uh, at least 5600 or uh, above, and price wise around 200. That's what I'm looking for right now. So, this installation is definitely taking longer uh, let's talk about the if we can side by side let's do it here a little bit like this <clears throat> so mini s forum i haven't uh, bought anything from them but uh, between them and there is another company i'm forgetting their name uh, i like them because they do offer bare bone you just get the thing without the ram ssd and os what you do is you get the ssd of your choice you get your ram uh, of your choice so you get a little bit more bang out of your buck what I like to do is I uh, get an uh, Samsung SSDs and for RAM I go either Crucial or um, <coughs> Vengeance Pro alright let's go it's, it's gonna boot now the other brand is B-Link. So B-Link, they don't offer anything, um, let's say, uh, bare bone. If you were to go and buy there, you're stuck with 60 g Like, I don't like to buy a RAM and then have to upgrade. I just want bare bone. Let's log in here. Uh, my installation is done. Can I? Nope. Maybe not. Not today. Oh, I can actually. Actually, it's 
So that is a very nice surprise. It's going the way. All right, so this is it, my uh, virtual machine. Uh, it's not looking good because let's power it off. <clears throat> the reason it lo the graphics look a little bit funky is display. You see, 16 MB. We're gonna change it. display is video memory 16 MB we're gonna give you 128 now for the network we're gonna it's NAT we're gonna make it bridged and now we're gonna start it So if you're wondering how it gets to the full screen, uh, here it is, uh, guest edition CD image. You run this and you run it uh, or update it and your installation, it's still a little bit funky. Like right here, this feels different. All right, so I'm gonna go pause the video here, uh, check up a couple of things and we'll resume. All right, so I've uh, searched around. I like this, but uh, I don't like this. I want the, uh, the biggest reason I don't like this is there is no search. I'm typing, no search. To search, I have to click here and then I get the search box. Uh, the X face has the menus like Windows. I really enjoyed that uh, desktop environment, so I'm gonna try to get that. So let's first, uh, update our Kali. I should have used so All right, APT list. Oh, great. Oh. It's at 2%, it's gonna take some time. You can see it right here. So let's pause the video here. All right, so the upgrade took longer than the, or equivalent to the actual installation. That was big. Uh, so I'm looking how to find out uh, the desktop environment I have. This is the command right here. I'm gonna first try to do it in here. And I have GNOME. If I go to my Kali, it is echo, echo, what's the dollar sign XTG? Let's turn our, our caps lock and type in desktop and I have X face. So basically, I need X face to get that. And this is the thing that is more useful, especially in terms of Linux. That's how I knew that Try Hack Me machines were bad. Uh, the usage over here on Try Hack Me, and I can show you, was 100% for three straight hours right here. This, oh, sorry, I had it. Uh, Oh god, come on. So the usage right here, you can see normally it's two person, but when it was installing Nasus, it was hundred percent for three full three hours and then I gave up. That's how bad it was. The only time that Nasus worked and I was able to do some of my labs uh, I I went to sleep maybe for a couple of hours more and when I woke up finally it was done and it was easy a five hour uh, afternoon uh, somewhere from five o'clock to nine o'clock so give and take because I uh, I start working around four o'clock 
all the way up to 11 o'clock. So I need X face. Uh, let's get to Cali. These are the instructions that I got on from the Cali website. You need to run all these. I'm gonna do it here right now. So let's get started. All right, so I've updated it. Next is to install sudo apt install. Let's say yes automatically. Kali desktop. I hope it's already in there. Zero new install. It means it was already there. Uh, let's say update alternatives config x session manager so you can see the ones i have i have a x phase i have start x phase start plasma gnome apt purge auto remove kali test top gnome and now i know why i'm this mess because i did select gnome uh, in the start of the installation oh control z let's go to first one uh, alternative session manager we're gonna select the choice i'm gonna start x phase or i don't see light dm in here Let's go with zero. Enter it. Reboot. Let's reboot and see what happens. see an X there and it's still the same let's go sudo apt update and sudo apt install Kali desktop Oops. valid operation update sudo apt Still don't see light DM, but X face option. Let's go with start X face or Gnome session is at two. I'm gonna go with four. Mission night, okay. You know what? Let's run it under authentication failure. It means I don't have the root password set yet. All right, so let me. Yeah. 
four. Is manual mode. Let's go and then update. option for Kali we could go through the advanced option and see what's in there it's slow maybe it was loading the other nope All right, let's pause it. All right, so after much trial and error, I have found what I was looking for. So this is the command, sudo task cell. We go there and we tell it which environment we want. We have X phase. We don't want, we simply per packages for quality purposes, okay. And let's go uninstall known. Press OK. Hopefully it will do that. I should have seen the if there is a light DM. Let's see if a reboot gets me there or not. They're not listed. I still have that one. This is becoming more uh, painful now. Okay, so something tells me I've done it. And I think I have. So here is what I did. What was happening was that the manager was stuck at um, GDM3 for GNOME. What you need to do is, let's see, Package configure reconfigure. I tried installing it, it said zero installed, it's already installed obviously because it was installed part of this when Kali X face installs. So, what I did was dpackage configure reconfigure light tm. When you do that, you enter your password, you get to this screen, and you get to choose GDM3 or light tm. For example, I'm gonna go back to GNOME, I click here sudo uh, actually we can go to this
I'm gonna just quickly show you something here you can see it's it's at 3 start X phase 4 I'm gonna keep it now if my trial error is true I'm gonna you, you see it's supposed to install X phase that is the same environment but we change the, the session manager to no it should come back with no you can see it came back with GNOME see so what you have to do is to switch between desktop environments you have to change the session manager and all these instructions they were wrong this instruction that I was following was wrong that is to to switch it you have to go and uh, Do, uh, change the session so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna minimize it let's go again the cool thing is that it saves your commands I'm gonna click OK switch to light TM and sudo reboot this time I don't have to do anything else just that's it if you have installed it as part of your installation uh, multiple environments yep yeah, just switch it uh, if not, then you have to go follow the instruction to up, uh, download that uh, interface and then switch it. Here you can see my and I, I don't like this desktop. All right, so I have the desktop that I like. I have my usage. I have. my window where I want if I press the window key on my computer oh sorry on my physical keyboard I uh, see it does this uh, menu pops up and I don't have to click anywhere I can simply start typing and it will start searching in that installation Asus is not in here Hydra is not in here uh, burp suite it's not in there wow what else uh, we use nmap nice okay it's uh, I guess then it's really purple I have to install all those uh, manually but here it is for the call installation wow it uh, took forever but yeah I learned a few more Linux Hopefully this video has helped you, it definitely did to me. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.